five minutes. Uh, let me dispense with the protocol and uh, start. Uh, uh, let me begin by disagreeing with uh, both Yuri and uh, uh, the case with the German Embassy. Um, there are good reasons to be optimistic. I'm impressed with that. But I believe uh, the future of multilateralism is quite dim. Uh, that the multilateralism, as we've known it, uh, is going to be uh, in, is in trouble and that we must have uh, modest, limited expectations for multilateralism. And uh, the, a new phase, I believe, uh, in the history of multilateralism uh, is about to start. That if you can look, look to the past, uh, there were at least three phases of multilateralism. The interwar period, when the League of Nations was created, the ideas of transcendental, supranational uh, notions of collective security were set up, ended in a fiasco. Uh, the, the UN was set up more as a great power concept, but then uh, the great power understanding broke down pretty quickly after that. And the institutions now goes by the tag name called liberal international order was actually built by, by the United States and the Western countries. So that, that was the order that we had. It was the end of the Cold War that created a number of delusions. That we are here at a transcendental moment again, and that national sovereignty does not matter. Here, yeah, multilateralism is going to solve every problem in the world. But I think that moment has passed, and I think we're going to come back to a more messy, uh, complicated environment uh, in which the state is back, and the uh, state is going to be, uh, and sovereign, and sovereign states are going to be playing a much larger role. So let me deal with five specific uh, sets of issues that, that we have to deal with it in the uh, in the fourth phase of uh, multilaterals. I think uh, one is, what is the relationship between power distribution and multilateral institutions? Are multilateral institutions something that stand above the power structure and develop a logic of their own? Or they merely represent the existing power distribution? And I think much of the criticism of Trump today uh, reminds you that the order was built by the Americans and the Americans, the Americans begin to withdraw from it. We are at a difficult moment. And, and I think that is the problem because uh, the Americans are saying it doesn't work for me anymore. Trump is saying that. And therefore, the questions of whether the existing order, whether it's WTO, TPP, or whether they work or not, fundamentally is being questioned. Now, whether China is the rising power can actually replace the United States and offer us a global multilateral system. Uh, I'm not betting my bottom dollar on it, so uh, I don't know if anyone in this room is. But maybe sometime down the road, but at this point, they're not going to do it. So I think the power shift today, the decline of the Americans and the capitalism, is going to create problems for the multilateral economic institutions and political institutions. The second aspect, I think, uh, is about the notions of uh, uh, economic globalization. I mean, I think uh, this idea that it was inevitable, uh, today I think has taken a big knocking. Three core ideas that have emerged in the last 25 years. Open borders, globalization, and intervention by the major powers to fix other people's lives. All three are under stress. That I think this idea that uh, our social communities merely entities of economic efficiency are the social organisms. Would a community allow, purely for economic reasons, rank outsiders to come in and live in their midst? The assumption that has been made is we are mainly economic creatures, that there's no social life, and that economic efficiency demands open borders. Today, the challenge is coming from the West and Europe, and not from the We love open borders. I don't think anybody benefited from open borders than the Indians. Uh, the entire world was open to us, but today I think we're going to be in a different situation. Therefore, uh, we were the ones who say globalization was bad. Today, Mr. Trump is saying the same thing. So, a bit of a problem uh, in adapting to that, but I think that is going to be the new reality we have to deal with. Third, I think, is the question of internal order. The idea that Americans know best how to fix Iraq, or the UN knows how to fix Libya or some other place, the delusion of the last 25 years that somehow transnational institutions can come and fix other people's life in the name of promotion of democracy, in the name of eliminating, uh, you know, rogue states, in the eliminating, creating responsibility to protect. We've seen the bark has been worse than the bite. Uh, the imp impact has been limited than the claims that were made on behalf of multilateral institutions. So I think you've got to go back that you're not going to fix other people's lives and that uh, the question of creating nation building will still have to go to the communities and not the responsibility of 
outside us. So I think there's a problem that we have to deal with. And finally, the whole question of technology. Uh, we were told 20 years ago, internet is going to liberate all of us from the controls of the state. We want to be in this great utopia of freedom of individuals. All we need is just our computers will take us to the world beyond the state. The state is back. States have found a way of controlling, limiting, using the power, the computing power to regulate your lives and mine and monitor you and me. So I think there again, we are at a different situation. So I would think as we look ahead that that the, the claims that were made for the last 25 years are going to be difficult to sustain. And I think the challenges of uh, the transformation that is taking place in power shift, the nature of economic globalization, technological transformation, I think if you look, we need an international postal union in the late 19th century. Uh, today, do you go to the post office? Uh, many people have gen generation of youngsters are not even seen a post office. Or uh, do you need, uh, we, we had a W, what is it, International Telecommunication Union. I mean, that struggle, uh, there, as they become obsolescent, they're struggling to find the relevance. But it's also, I think technology too is going to change. So there will be functional internationalism. But the idea that internationalism and multilateralism are going to be answers for everything that I think uh, must be taken with the principles. Let me conclude by one thought. The Indian state and the Indian capital have had serious problems of adapting to every phase of multilateralism. A liberal socialism, internationalism, we thought in the whole world, world government was a great idea. So Sanjay and I joined JNU. We still thought the world government was possible. The left wing one, uh, now the right wing one is going to happen. So therefore, I think this, this idea that somehow that the national movement's idealism was quickly knocked out by the, when it coped with the world, second world post-war uh, order. And globalization too, I think we were hesitant, reluctant globalizers. Under multilateral institutions, fear of our sovereignty has limited what we do on the international states. And because we were against regional integration, we also stepped back from within our region. Today, I think India has to adapt a part of the way amidst the global power shift and the nature of technological change, we need to come up with a more practical, pragmatic way of adapting international institutions, of regional institutions, to a national security needs. But I'm sure, since Sanjay is here, Indian capital has failed to think through this. Uh, and they've depended too much on the Indian state to bail out them. But I think if we don't, as a civil society, think about the future, we're going to be in serious trouble at the current turbulence in multilaterals. 